Hey up, now then folks, and welcome to the second instalment of the Roadless B450, where in this video, we're going to be fixing the slipping clutch and broken clutch fork, which happened back at Driffield Steam Rally in August last year. I didn't want to fix it straight away, as I didn't want to split the tractor during rally season, as I wanted to take it to the last rally that I would attend with the stuff, which was York's Traction Engine Rally, which I decided to just tow it there. But we'll start with the first thing I did, which was to free off the hydraulic arms, as I do intend on taking it ploughing. I managed to get the one out of the uh, drop down arm that sort of pivots a little bit out a lot easier. It was trapped in the knuckle, whereas these were trapped, I believe, at this side and also now where the top of the pin is, but we've got her now, we've got her. And also while I've been doing that, this has come loose, which is qu I'm quite pleased about because I haven't had to rav one of these out because that's missing on the roadless, so I'll be able to copy that. So as I mentioned, I got these knuckles for the two-wheel drive B450 and they're seized to the drop-down arms, same as the roadless, so I had a free and off session. And while I was doing that, I discovered that the winding arm handles aren't all the same, if we look closer at this picture. As we can see, the clutch fork has been broken before and brazed back on, possibly in its working life. Luckily, we got this other B450 for spares last year, which is a compatible clutch fork and carbon bearing, which was like new compared to the one we took off which is fairly worn down and also looks as though it's picked up at some point as it has a great big chip in it. Charlie's just undoing the stopper. I've already got the throttle undone and taking the air filter off. Um, I'm just draining diesel down as well. I can't get the tap turned off. Right, just show them where we're splitting it again. We're splitting it here. Right, so what do you need to remove now? This. Which is the wires for the lights and the dynamo to go into the front. And then you've just got to d disconnect all these heater plugs, glow plugs, haven't we? Also had to disconnect the oil breather to air filter, the air filter pipe and throttle linkage cable. On the other side is the hydraulic pipes, oil pressure pipe, water temperature sensor and front axle stabiliser bracket underneath, along with the steering column and extra prop shaft slash slipper clutch on the other side before we could pull it apart. As you can see, we are at it. Got all fuel pipes off. I've well, started doing a filter change and the sediment bowl clean. Split in half. I'm going to try and see if I get that bearing out of there and then this bearing out of there. As it feels a bit loose and sounds a bit rattly. We have new clutch. Uh, clutch has been relined by Rydale Brakes. Although John from Repair and Maintenance can get all the new lining plates. So I decided to refit this and just give it a quick, quick clean up with sandpaper and do the same with flywheel and clean that off and change that bearing inside of there before refitting the clutch plate. We then moved on to tackle the noisy bearings at the front of the gearbox and as you can see there's a diagram here and how it all comes to bits. Notches go to the back of housing. Yeah. Got the new bearings come. That fits all right I think. Got the bigger one. The cheaper one of the two. Slack. Before welding the shaft, I preheated it as this helps to prevent cracking and distortion and, and ensures a more ductile weld with better machine ability, which Mark was pleased of. It's like a glove mark. I'm supposed to put that back on there, but I clean that surface up for the gasket and then uh, clean the crap out of there. Looks like an oil ways so that oil can come into these bearings, maybe in here. In that I was in bit. Not sure what it is, but it's magnetic. Bunging it out of there. So it seems like a good idea. So I've put a bit of some leftover gear oil there from other tractor. And I've just given it a squirt with an oil can into them balls in bearing. So I've just tapped that in with shaft on, on hammer, just carefully braid it in. And then there's a little oil hole there. Push it up, cock it up. It does say top on it. So that goes like that, and then that'll, the oil way, will stay clear. I don't know if it's an oil way, I'm over a return really. And then I was just sort of tapping the bearing on like that when it was off. Whoa, she's here, look. Oil seal, does it fit? From repair and maintenance. Yeah. Look at all these box of goodies. I've got that in there and I must have to line that keyway up. I think I must have to put keyway in first. 
put a bit of grease on that seal there. I've got that keyway in there lined up. Oh yeah. Would it be better to rattle it gun with rattle gun? I wonder if we go with socket set to start off with. How will you know when it's bloody in? As you'll maybe see in the video that Charlie's holding on to is the spline bit that goes inside of the clutch and I use that as the clutch lining tool as it separates and made it quite easy to split the tractor and line it back up as I could just spin it round and bolt it together again. Now we've got the two halves of the tractor back together, I'll show you the clips of taking the steering box to bits, which includes coming across this bronze bush, which should have been maybe two bearings top and bottom, this was fitted at the bottom and was replaced for a bearing, along with changing the oil light bushes. I managed to get a standard oil light bush, but just get the outside turned down in a lathe to make it fit. If you want to see more about rebuilding the steering box, I'll leave you a link in the description below. So I'm doing piston seal on roadless and last two I've done were black seals and that groove seems to be a lot deeper and that aluminium ring there slides in a lot further so the, the snap ring goes on I don't remember it being this difficult this one I've had to abuse it a bit so I've put the blue blue seal in boiling water and then quickly put it on and then got it somewhere near and I just couldn't get it so I've just gone in with vice and just gently nipped it and gone round all the way and it's sort of, I've sort of heard it snap in but it looks like it's it's sealed in so it's gonna have a hell of a seal is that I've only lightly skimmed across this piston seal change as I've already done a video on this so if you want to see more I'll leave a link in the description for that video as well just been having a clean up on fuel filter side right at back of there traps a lot of crap in I've got loads of crap in out of there loads of bits of rubbish and I can't just get it out of the drain plug at the front because that just comes just down there, just there. But there is a little tiny screwdriver there, but I couldn't get it, I couldn't get it off that. And I wonder if that's where you get some crap out of there, because that's where it's building up just in that back end there. Anyway, I've got it, we're just ramming a rag down and poking it and trying to get it stick to the rag so it's fairly clean now at the back of there. Clean the glass bowl with some acid because it was all stained. So I've cleaned that and I've been in with steel wool. So I'm going to put that back on, but I can't really remember how they went. So I've put it like that. Brass thing with a groove in around that pipe and that rubber around there. Don't know what the brass thing's doing really. So in these next few clips, we're going to be getting rid of the steel corroded fuel pipes and rubber bits to make it look like this. However, we'll be doing it in copper. Struggling with these diesel pipes to and from tank. So I'm gonna do them in 10 mil copper tube. So I've got to replace, I don't think one of them was the tap. I think this wasn't, I think this was the return. It doesn't have a breather pipe in it for some reason. That's the breather pipe from the farm hole that was laid in the bottom of the tank. So I've kept that. I was maybe gonna use it, but in the end I've just gone with some 10 mil copper tube and I've soldered it into a 3 8 so that's 3 8 male iron. And this is a 10 mil compression elbow and I'm going to do this in 10 mil pipe. That's what was there originally but I, I can't get anything to fit into that. Oh, very well anyway, it's sort of short stuff. So we'll see how it all goes. I've been to Rydale Brakes and got me, me temp, took them some templates and bent some Imperial. I think it's 3 8 and 5 16 pipe. I've got one done and I've got a mixture of fittings and stuff but struggling to get stuff to fit that. One seems to go in real well and one doesn't. So here you can see I've used the traditional hemp and black heldite oil seal 
to make a connection onto the oil tank there. And then I've bent that pretty much all in one pipe, but I've done a bit of sneakiness because one's 10 mil copper and the other's imperial to get it as like a, I think it's like a breather pipe, isn't it? The return from the injection pump back to the tank, which is the breather standpipe. And then I've just put a blue line on there to line it up so that when I put it in the vise to solder it, I know it's right. And then I've used steel wool to clean it up and a bit of flux to make sure that the solder will stick. So I looked into having some ferrules made for the bigger pipe. However, I couldn't find anything to match the threads. So what I decided to do was redo the breather pipe that went from the top of the rocker cover to the air filter so that I could reuse them ferrules for the diesel injection pump below. And then on the fuel pipe coming into the filter, I did that in 10 mil and used a 10 mil compression joint to quarter inch male brass connector. And I just wanted to show you this before I cut it to put the tap in that I bent it all in one piece. And then I'm just trying to decide where I'm going to put the tap. But the first option I think is the bad idea. As you can see it when you stood looking at it, even from quite a distance you can see it. And then to and from the glass bowl to the lift pump is eight millimeter and I can't remember what imperial size it is, but I'm one ferrule short of them. So what I've decided to do is to use the best ones on sure that I have three of, and then the one that you can't see that much behind that goes to the, I think it comes from the glass bowl. I decided to use an eight millimeter compression times quarter inch male connector unit on it, which will go back of there out of sight. Another thing I've decided to replace is it was cut off somewhere there and had a bit of green plastic on and then some black plastic so I've renewed the overflow for the radiator and put it in 8 mil, which is the same as Imperial, I can't think what it is, is it 5 to 16 for every size I just used my new tube bender, I've done the 10 mil stuff in and done that and it's not exactly right because I think it should go the back of that, right at the back of there but somehow I've got to go down the side radiator and come out of there but I've decided I'm going to come down there I'm going to straight line and just have it there so you can sort of see it terminate there. So I don't aim on respraying the whole tractor. However, the air filter was really bad with like a like a fluffy dust rust sat on top that I didn't want to penetrate it. So I cleaned it all back to bare metal, put some rust treater on and then I primed it and then I'll paint it red to match the toolbox which I had knocking about, which is very similar to an international one going off the BWD6 and the BFL50 I already have. So I've tried to put all this stuff down this rubber rose to go up to that, so it looks tidy underneath. Like I thought, once I'd got my holes drilled, that was to line up with that, I think. That's a bit of a failure, is that? So in this picture, the steering arm is not only lifted up, but it's also moved further out, and the steering column arm moves further inside. I didn't do anything else with the steering ram arm apart from the felt washers at the top and bottom of the ram. Looks like someone's used a bit of carpet there, but they do leak a lot of grease. If we aren't careful, if we lift that up to there, you could do quite a bit of damage, I think, there. So, we'll weld a little bit of metal in there just to stop that. So it new bump stop fitted, just welded a bit 10 mil extra on. We know of a lot of safes on that. It seemed that every time you put the wheels in lock and turn them back again, the hydraulic hoses for the steering ram would then catch again with the wheel. So I thought it best to move them forward. And though that extra little bit of plating was just perfect for adding them clips in to hold the hoses and make them look real tidy. Time was starting to progress now and we weren't far off the plower match coming up where I wanted to take all three. So I didn't get many videos of fitting the leak off pipe, the step up and the battery box holder and all that stuff. But as you can see, it was quite difficult to get it underneath the clutch lever pedal and the steering rack arm so it didn't all clash. So if you're into a bit of metal fabrication work, I'll leave a link to Ollie Snowball who does some real mint precision agricultural engineering. But it was great to see the old girl move under its own power after spending so many months in the shed fixing her up. The few problems I found was that the leak off pipe that connected the injectors to the pump leaked but managed to bodge the old one back up 
before Rillington's YFC ploughing match where I had all three displayed ploughing together, which I'll leave links to at the end of the video. Other problems were the gearbox is really noisy in third and fourth and worse when it's under load with fourth gear popping out of gear. And also the hydraulic arms still drop when they're not locked off. So I'll have to look into that. I'd like to thank Brother Andy for helping with bits, Stu for supplying the trolley jack, Triple M for machining us some bits up, Mick Harper for telling us how to convert it from positive earth to negative earth, John at repair and maintenance for advice and parts, Rydell brakes for relining the clutch and the fuel pipes, East Coast bearings for seals and bearings, Tommy Hydra hose for the power assisted steering hoses, and John Crowder for the spare tractor, Andy Kemp for moral support, and you guys at home for watching.